Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Uh, today's lecture is about motion on the inclined plane. Well, this lecture is part of the course which is called Physics for Teens. It's basically a high school level course of physics which I am recording right now, one lecture uh, at a time. Uh, right now we are in the middle of mechanics part and there are others. Um, uh, this uh, course is presented on the unisor.com website. Um, if you find this lecture on YouTube or anywhere else, I do suggest you actually to switch to unisor.com. It's a free site without any advertisement. And the advantages of uh, listening to this lecture uh, through this website is that number one, you have a complete um, picture of whatever the topics will be provided. Um, number two, every lecture has detailed uh, notes. Number three, there is an educational process if you, if you would like to get involved in it for either self-study or supervised study. Um, and uh, it allows you basically to take exams and uh, if you are working just by yourself or with a supervisor, you can take a look at the results of your exams and uh, do something about it. Anyway, uh, let's b get back to our motion on the inclined plane. Okay, first let me just draw a picture which would probably explain everything. Okay, this is something which we call inclined plane um, and uh, this is a, a angle phi, phi. So it's a plane which is not horizontal but at certain angle. And there is an object there which obviously has certain weight and uh, it slides down uh, this inclined plane. Well, sometimes I use the word inclined plane, sometimes I'm using the word slide because it really looks like a slide on the children's uh, playground, right? So, on the slide this object is sliding under its own uh, weight. So, my uh, task is to determine how fast it will go down. Now, obviously, if uh, the angle phi is greater, it's steeper, it should go faster, right? And if angle phi is 90 degree, which means basically there is no inclined plane because there is nothing which holds the object from, from, from underneath, the object should fall down with acceleration of the free fall, which is on planet Earth called G, which is approximately 9.8 meters per second square. All right, so let's see. So in our extreme case, this would be the maximum. Now, in our other uh, extreme case, when phi is equal to zero, basically we have a horizontal plane, right? then the object will just j just sit by itself, right? You just put something in the horizontal plane and nothing happens. It just does not move. The weight is completely compensated with the reaction of the supporting plane, right? So in this particular case, in, in the middle between these two extremes, we understand there, that there should be some kind of uh, reaction force which should falls which okay r which should force our object to slide exactly on this plane on, a, on an inclined plane so the combination of this force and this force the weight and the reaction of the supporting plane are the only two forces which are acting um, on our object and their resultant force should be directed along the slope, right? So this is supposed to be parallelogram. This, this, this and this is supposed to be parallelogram, right? Because if it's not, then our object either would fly off the inclined plane, which does not happen. Now if it's turned this way, it should actually be through, go through the plane which also doesn't happen. The reaction force is exactly 
of such a value that this is parallelogram and the diagonal is um, directed along the slope, right? Okay, now we do know that this angle is straight, right angle, sorry, right, right angle, right? Why? Because the reaction force is always perpendicular to the supporting plane. So, no matter how the plane is positioned at angle or whatever, the reaction of this uh, supporting plane always on the perpendicular or we're saying normal to the plane. Okay, so this is normal to this plane. So this angle is right angle. All right, now if this angle is right angle, then this angle is also right angle, right? This one. Which means if this is W, this is the right triangle and we can actually determine two different forces. One is the resulting force, this one, which actually pushes the object down the slope, right? Well, if this is phi and this is this, uh, th the right angle, then obviously this is phi as well, right? Because this is perpendicular to this, this is perpendicular to that, so if two uh, sides of one angle are correspondingly perpendicular to, of two sides another, then the angles are the same. So this is angle phi, this is w. Now, when I'm talking about the value w, obviously it's a vector, but if I don't put this vector thing on the top, I actually mean that we all know the direction of this vector, and I, I'm talking only about its absolute value, about its magnitude. And it's positive because if it's directed somewhere else, um, then I will use not in the positive direction of some axis, but in the negative direction, I will use the minus sign, basically. So we are assuming that all values are positive, but we do know that their direction is such and such. In this case, this goes down and this goes this way. All right, fine. So in theory, we can very easily determine the strength of this force, the magnitude of this force, because it's just the right triangle, and it's obviously W times sine of phi, right? This cathetus is hypotenuse times the sine of this angle. All right, fine. Now, this is the force which moves, let's call it WF. Now, what other uh, forces are involved here, which I didn't really mention before? Now, obviously, if this is a reaction force, it's supposed to be a reaction on something. On what? Obviously, on the pressure which this object um, exerts on the, on the plane, which must be exactly equal to in, uh, in magnitude to this R. Well, it's not equal maybe on my... Uh, drawing, but in any case, it's supposed to be equal. So this is WR. So this force which goes down can always be represented as the sum of this, which is WF, and this, which is WR. So WR, which is R, I'm talking about again magnitude, that's W kind uh, times cosine of phi, right? Obviously because this is W, so this is W, this is also angle phi, so R is equal to W times the cosine of this angle. Well, basically that's quite sufficient to determine how our object will move, because if I have the force which moves it down the slope, and I have the mass, well, if I have the mass, I don't have the mass, but if I have the mass, then this force must be equal to the mass times acceleration, right? That's the second law of Newton. Now, on the other hand, since I know what Wf is, it's W times sine f, uh, fine, and I know that the weight is related to mass and free acceleration, because weight is basically the force which forces the m uh, object of mass m to go down, vertically down, with acceleration g, right? So it's mg 
uh, times sine f uh, phi sine phi so from this and this we deduce that a is equal to g times sine of phi so it doesn't depend actually on mass which we don't know the acceleration depends only on some constant and the slope now let's just analyze if phi is equal to zero which means my slope is not really a slope but a horizontal plane sine is equal to of zero is equal to zero so i have no acceleration right which is right i mean the object will just lie on the on the uh, on the flat uh, surface if my sine is equal to one for angle equal to 90 degree right then my acceleration would be just free falling g and that's exactly what corresponds now let me just make a little um, uh, logical deviation i did not talk about uh, the reference frame i'm kind of assuming that the reference frame is my y axis goes down and my x axis goes to the right right i mean not down but vertically i mean so i assume basically this is my directions this is x and this is y which is fine in this particular case it's fine however i would like to mention one might actually be i don't know simplification if you wish um, you see there are usually many forces which are acting on the on the object now in this case we have two forces right now the uh, reference frame might be might actually result in easier approach if the reference uh, frame is catering to the movement of the object not to the forces now major force is the gravity so my um, uh, system of coordinates is basically catering to uh, the fact that my gravity looks simpler it has only the y direction and no x right so it's vertical so there is a y coordinate so if I'm talking about the vectors it's basically uh, 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 0 com, uh, comma w right so no projection on the x axis and there is only projection on the w uh, on, on the y axis which is equal to in absolute value w now um, and if i'm using w as my um, uh, absolute value the magnitude then i really should put ma minus here because the force of the gravitation is directed downwards right and my y goes up so that's kind of a natural thing however it's not <coughs> it's not the simplest thing you might consider slightly different uh, system of uh, coordinates and here is the one which i prefer in this particular case and when we will talk about the next problem you will see how much how much more important this is i prefer to simplify the movement of our um, uh, object for this knowing that the object is moving parallel to the uh, uh, to the uh, slope I will use this slope as my x coordinate and perpendicular to this would be y it seems a little unnatural from the first um, viewpoint however it greatly simplifies the movement of our uh, body now I I was um, uh, calculating the acceleration along the slope what if I would like to measure acceleration as a vector which has certain coordinates well it would have two coordinates in the old system of coordinates right because it goes under angle so it will have some uh, acceleration along the x-axis and some acceleration along the uh, y-axis now in this particular case with this particular coordinate system I do have only movement along the x-axis and there is no movement along the y it's always equal to zero which is a little bit more convenient now what's less convenient is our weight now the weight becomes a little bit more complicated but reaction force is not so if I'm talking about real vector algebra I'm I'm simplifying a little bit more I'm simplifying movement and direction force and I'm still 
uh, a little bit more complicated with, uh, with the weight. And it does make sense because in this particular case, uh, now I can say that my um, acceleration has only x component and it's equal to whatever I was just calculating, uh, which is uh, g times sine of phi. And my y component is zero. So that's my vector of acceleration of this object. And it's a little bit easier to represent it this way. And now, well, basically that's it about this particular problem. And I would like to switch to a little bit more complicated, where these coordinates will be really important. Now, consider we have exactly the same setting. However, there is one important consideration. This is not an uh, um, inclined plane or, or a slide which is, well, fixed on the surface of the Earth anymore. Let's consider that it sits on some kind of a table. Table is fixed, but this thing can slide without friction along this table. Now, why is it more complicated? Well, just think about it. If the object forces the whole thing down, well, it means that this uh, uh, slide might slide from under the object to the right, right? So the object will not move exactly parallel to the x-axis, and I'm still re re retaining this coordinate system because it will be easier for me. So the object is not moving this way. It's moving basically under some kind of an angle. Why? Because on one, on one hand, it slides the slope. On, on another hand, the slope goes from under it. So the movement would be like this, basically, right? So that complicates the picture, significantly complicates. But we can say now that the reaction force is no longer, the reaction force is no longer the W R was a minus sign, where W R is basically W times sine of this angle phi. And because of this imbalance, you see, if you are pressing something on the plane and it's not moving, then the weight is actually exactly equal to the reaction force. But if you press something on the plane and the plane by itself is moving down, the pressure would be less on the plane, and there are, and that's why the uh, the reaction force would be less. Now, if this is an inclined plane, again, I'm not only slowing down by by sliding down, my my my, my plane goes this way, and that basically weakens the pressure because the plane goes from under the object. So. R now, by its absolute value, is less than W sine phi. So if this is WR, like here, uh, you know what, let me just draw it a little bit better. So again, we have it, this thing on the table. I'm still using this as an x-axis and perpendicularly to this would be y. Now this is my object, so this is the w. And this would be my wr, but this is the real r and this is minus r. It's smaller by magnitude than this, because the plane slides out. Well, that complicates the picture, because right now I don't have the reaction force. I know that reaction force and the weight are two components, and now this thing goes this way. The resultant of this force and this goes this way. And that's the real trajectory in my system of coordinates 
of, of the object because again object goes down the slope but slope goes to the right and that would be the real trajectory again that complicates the picture it, it's still parallelogram but it's no longer right triangles here so what do we do okay let's just think about it and here my uh, system of coordinate uh, coordinates play, plays a very important role. Let's just think about the movement of this object separately as a projection to the x-axis and as a projection to the y-axis. Actually, my, 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 my first is how it's projected to the y um, to the y-axis. Well, let's just think about the forces which are acting uh, along the y coordinates. Now, what are these forces? Well, actually, I have this force, reaction force, right? And I have a projection, a projection of the weight on this. Uh, line which is parallel to the y uh, to the y-axis which is WR so WR is acting um, along the y-axis and R is acting along the y-axis right so along the y-axis my forces are my forces are to the negative side it goes WR and this is negative, right? Because again, I'm assuming that all these numbers, numerical values are just magnitudes and that's why I put minus because it's to the negative direction of the y-axis. Y-axis goes this way, my force goes this way. Now R, on the other hand, is a positive. And my acceleration is negative actually, right? My a y is negative. So if all these numbers m a y w r and r are positive, then I have to put these numbers, these, these minus signs, to to compensate. Okay. Now, what is w r? Well, w r I know what it is because this is really projection on the y axis. So this angle is right angle. So I know that WR is equal to W times cosine phi, right? This is phi, this is phi, and WR is W times cosine of this angle. Well, R is R. I can't say anything about R right now, but I do can say something about uh, AY. Well, let's just think about it. By how much in the direction of the y axis my object moves if my entire plane slides this way? So let's consider my entire plane slides this way. So from this it goes to this. So this is the movement of the plane. Now, what is the vertical, not vertical, what is the component? of the movement of this object in this particular direction. So if this moves by d, how much this is moved? So this is d, this is the same as this, this is phi, so this is d times sine of phi. So for every movement of the plane to the right, by distance d. My object, if it does not have this component along the x, if it has only a y component, I'm talking only about its y component, the y component moves by this. Now, if the distances are related this way, so the speeds are related because they are derivatives from the, way, uh, from, from, from the, from the distance, and the acceleration are related this way. So, this is equal to a plane times sine of phi. 
But this should actually be very clear because it's very important for everything else. If A is acceleration of the plane, and we are talking about only in this direction because this is a table on, on which it slides and the table is horizontal, it doesn't move anywhere, so there is a reaction force which prevents it to jump up or down, it's only to the right. So as this slide moves from this position to this position, vertical component of the movement of this object, only vertical, I'm not talking about because any movement like this one has two components along the um, X component which is this and along the Y component which is this perpendicular to the plane right that's why the important to have this system of coordinate one is along the plane and another is perpendicular because this is really very important we are projecting everything on the on the Y axis which is perpendicular to this plane so this would be my acceleration of the object, um, the y component of acceleration of the object, in terms of compo uh, in terms of acceleration of the plane, and again its angle. So let's just leave leave the letter p here. That would be easier. And now I can write this particular equation in the following form: minus m a p sine phi equals to r minus r minus w r and w r is uh, w times cosine okay this is a very important equation and we will call it equation number one now what's wrong about this equation well there's nothing wrong about this but what's insufficient because we have two different unknowns r and acceleration of the plane well let's assume we have to determine acceleration of the plane and this is the whole problem actually what is my acceleration of the plane as the object pulls down well obviously i don't know mass that's that's important and they don't know the mass of the plane this slide because obviously it's important consider it this way if the um, slide itself is very massive well most likely the small uh, uh, object which is on the uh, uh, on its surface it will slide down but it will move only slightly the uh, the slide acceleration will be very uh, small because the force is basically the same right so uh, acceleration will be smaller so it after actually depends on, on mass it depends on the mass of the of the slide itself well we'll see what we will need for, for a complete solution but actually these are kind of complicating factors now let's move on now since I'm actually talking about acceleration of the entire plane I have to somehow relate it to uh, again the uh, the second law of Newton I need the force which is actually pushing it in this direction. Well, let's just think about which force is this. Well, obviously it's related to the force exerted by this object and relates it, related to its weight. But the force actually is only the pressure, right? Which is equal to uh, well, minus r as far as the vector is concerned, right? So the pressure from the object is basically the same as the reaction force of the plane itself uh, into that direction. So all I can say is that we are pushing with the force R but in this direction, that's why it's minus. Okay, but plane goes this way. Now how is it supposed to be uh, working? Well, let's just forget about the object and let's just think about only the plane. So this is my inclined plane. This is my object which is pushing this with the force equal in magnitude of R. Now, obviously this is support. Why would my slide go this way? Well, obviously I have to uh, uh, represent this as perpendicular and horizontal, right? 
and the horizontal component pushes the slide to the right and the vertical component is balanced by the reaction force of the uh, of the table right now this is still an angle phi and this is angle phi so my horizontal component is my um, force uh, of the pushing the pressure force which is equal to r in magnitude and the horizontal component would be times what times sine sine phi this is just uh, right triangles right so the horizontal component this is phi this is phi so it's hypotenuse times sine would be the catetus and this is equal to what well this is equal to mass of the uh, of this inclined plane the slide itself times its acceleration in this direction the same thing as this one right because we are talking about this horizontal acceleration now it's much easier now we should really assume that we must know mass and mass so remaining unknown are acceleration of the plane and the reaction force so we have two equations with two unknowns and all we have to do is to solve these two equations to find out what is my r uh, a what is my acceleration of uh, uh, of the plane and r as well so how can we do that well it's simple it's linear anyway so r is equal to from here m a p divided by sine of phi putting it into this we will have minus m a p sine phi equals to m a p divided by sine phi minus now w is again m g right because w is a weight this is a mass this is a free fall acceleration times cosine phi well uh, from this we obviously have to multiply it by sine that would be square and that would be sine here now what is my AP AP is here and here so AP is equal to this goes to the right this goes to the left so it would be my mg sine phi cosine phi divided by m plus this minus goes this way m sine square phi all right so this is my a r from uh, I, I mean a p from this we, we can obviously find the r if you want r is equal to m a p divided by sine phi so it would be m m g we will define by divide by sine phi so it's only cosine phi and m plus m sine phi square phi so we have found the reaction force and that's very important now this is the reaction force if you remember from in the in the y direction right this is reaction force and this is my system of coordinates this is x and this is y this is r so we have found the magnitude of the reaction force what's the x component x component is zero because it's perpendicular to this particular line right the reaction force is perpendicular to a, to, to, to a slope so that's why it's very important actually to use this particular uh, system of coordinates it would be probably possible to do in a little bit more i would say habitual um, system of coordinates like this one vertical y and horizontal x but it's easier in this case that that's all i'm saying so we have found these guys and since we have completely uh, uh expression of r in 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 these coordinates and we obviously have the weight as well it's times sine and sine time times cosine we have two real forces so we can find not only the horizontal but also the vertical horizontal in this system i mean along the slope and perpendicular to slope so we can find the real movement which i'm not uh, i'm not going to do it it's kind of a simple thing anyway 
But the most important is basically this, to find the acceleration of the slide, because that's what's new about this um, problem relative to the previous one, where the slide was fixed. All right, so this was a presentation of a little bit more complicated mechanical problem. And uh, you know what, I'll probably complicate it even further in one of the future lectures when I will introduce the friction. We will have some friction, friction of this object on the surface of the uh, slope and then the friction of the slide on the surface of the table. So with these complications that would be a really big formula <laughs> as a result. Um, in any case, that's it for today. I, I suggest you to look at the website unisor.com, go to, go to the Physics 14 and uh, to Mechanics and uh, uh, to Dynamics and this is Superposition of Forces. That's one of the lectures in that particular uh, part of this course. Uh, read the explanation. Uh, I think it's um, it's like textbook basically. So you have the you have the advantage of having a textbook and the uh, video lecture together. So I do suggest you to go again through all this material. That's it. Thanks a lot and good luck.